Hi guys, School here. Welcome to a Fernbus video. Yes, a Fernbus video. It's been a while since I actually made a video on Fernbus, that's for sure. So how much has it changed in the 18 months since it came out? Maybe more. August 2016. Crikey, I think this game came out. Well, I've got the the, the latest DLC, which I think came out a couple of weeks ago. It's the Austria-Switzerland DLC, so you get basically this bit and this bit on your map. So you've got Geneva down here, Bern, Basel, Zurich, and Luzern. Then in uh, Austria, you've got Innsbruck, Salzburg, Linz, and Polten, Vienna, and Graz, as it were. Now, they've extended the map south. This is obviously the default map up here. And uh, I thought we'd take a little journey. I thought what would be more interesting to do is to take a few kind of hops around rather than do the long distance stuff. Because, I mean, some of this stuff is quite interesting. Uh, but I thought we'd, you know, we'd be better off just creating a route over here. And we'll go maybe from, I don't know, we'll go from Bern. Uh, we'll go to Lucerne, up to Zurich, and then we'll hop down towards Basel. So there you go, it's a nice little circuit that we'll do. I thought we'd do it in the Neoplan Skyliner. The Skyliner is, I think, the biggest bus in the game. Again, that came out um, not that long ago. What should we call this? Let's call this number 57. Uh, it won't be the Express. Uh, let's save that. And uh, we should then click Next, and we can go to the Neoplan Skyliner, which is this thing. And we'll customize it. Let's let's pick a nice skin for it. What have we got? We've got the Flixbus Winter. Well, that's no good because it's actually spring now. Uh, France, Italy, Netherlands, the V1 Flixbus. That's quite cool. Uh, V1 Incorporation, V2. Five euro badge on there. Uh, the Mind Bus. Mine, mine, mine. Corporation Mind Bus. DE. Actually, let's do that one. Let's do that. Why not? Uh, I've set the license plate as well so it reads SQRL1 because. Uh, let's see. Let's go for a system date and then we'll. Actually, let's just go for system date. Why not? Yeah, it's June. Let's go with June 1430. Let's maybe bring that back to like. Um, the morning look like 8 30 in the morning dynamic weather okay neoplan skyliner let's do it and here we are the neoplan skyliner quite a nice bus actually full double decker it's quite a nice quite a nice day as well I'm trying to work out if the graphics in this game changed looks very similar to how it always used to all right we'll click on the door I'll have, uh, we'll, we'll take a quick tour of the bus. You can have a look around. It's quite nice. There's the cockpit. Do you love the full 3D cockpit? So there you go. You've got this downstairs bit. You've got these rear-facing seats with tables. So it's a bit like a train in that respect. And these are all forward-facing. Then the unlucky people who get to sit next to the uh, the toilet facility. they got a little kitchen, which I find amazing. Like a kitchen on a bus. Like, what the heck's going on here? Kitchen, toilet, and then it goes up to another door there that you can get out. Goes upstairs. It's all the way to the back here. It's great little glass sunroof. I think if it was me, I'd probably want to sit up here, maybe like down the front here. Maybe somewhere like that. Because you get a little tray table on this one. And then you've got a massive window, sunroof. Of course, this is going to be a cracking seat to sit in. I wish you could sit in these, actually. Look at that. Look at the view you'd get. Anyway, let's get downstairs because we're probably going to be late if we're not careful. Uh, so let's jump inside the cockpit. Let's start by uh, switch the ignition on. Start the engine. Right, we'll activate the display. And uh, we'll turn the aircon on. We shall close the front door. I've got a button map for that. So I'll close the front door. Let's go down here. We need to flick some things on down here. Uh, so let's see, we want the Wi-Fi clearance to be on, the kitchen clearance to be on, uh, we want the restroom clearance on, we'll put the clearances on for all the lighting, the driver monitor can go on, the passenger monitor can go on, that tells the passengers where we're going, uh, we'll play the announcement later, uh, the luggage is, so that unlocks it, that locks it, so that'll lock the luggage compartments from the outside, uh, the doors, I'm not going to worry too much about that, we, I, I suppose what we should do is lock the doors like that, Actually, I guess that means, yeah, like the button doesn't work now. That's quite cool, actually. Uh, now, the air conditioning is on. However, we need to set the temperature. Otherwise, the passengers complain. Now, for some reason, I think they're like 22 Celsius, which personally I think is a little bit too warm. I, I would personally go for 
20 if I could, or 21 at most, but 22 seems to be what the game likes. Um, I don't know if that's what, what they normally go for. Let's jump over this side, the left side of the cockpit, and we have the comfort suspension system, which I believe you're supposed to put on, I think, when you're on the highway. Um, I'm not really sure. The fanfare is the horn, so that's the horn. That's the fanfare. Not exactly sure what that's for. This lifts the bus up and down. Uh, this one I can't see because we won't get rid of the picture. <laughs> this lifts the front and the rear independently. Brake matic Not 100% sure what that's for. The voltage converter. I, I take it that's maybe the supply that's fed to the passengers, maybe, for plug devices in, possibly. And then this stuff I usually leave alone as the hazard warning lights, which we don't really need very much. So now let's put the lights on. Uh, let's see. We can flick that to here because it started to rain, which is great. Let's see if we can get the wipers on. Okay, it's the wiper key. I'm not sure what key the wiper is on. Maybe we can do it from here. Need to figure that out. Um, don't need to drive yet. Hmm. Okay. Let me, let me quickly check the, the button mappings for my wiper. Okay, I have now fixed that. We just simply press this key, and the wipers mystically operate, and press it again, and it goes faster. Awesome stuff. Right. Brake, gear, parking brake, and off we go. Now, I don't know why he's waiting over there. He's got a left turn out of here. Right, he's not waiting anymore. What a troll. Right, I think we'll go then. Hopefully, I can not hit that guy. There we go. Using the full bus swing over the curb. I have to say, the water looks really cool. Like the rain on the ground, the ground textures look fantastic. Good old Unreal Engine, eh? What I have noticed, though, is if you drive in snow in this game, it does get a bit frame-heavy, but the rain seems to be okay. Let's get the indicator on. Now the Skyliner, just pulling up to the traffic lights here, the Skyliner, because of the double-decker, um, I have noticed when you drive it, you can easily find yourself unable to actually see the traffic lights. So you do have to be very choosy about where you pull up. So that you can still see when it changes, otherwise you have to go to external camera. I think the, the AI vehicles, I don't think they've changed. They don't look like they've changed since the game released. I'm still seeing the same models. It's a shame this game isn't moddable. Or maybe it is, but I've never seen any mods. Because uh, third party would quite happily bundle a whole load of vehicles for this and maps. And maybe the game would actually go somewhere. Right, neutral... Now we have to unlock the doors, so we'll unlock the doors and we'll unlock all the passenger stuff. Then we shall open those doors and we'll go outside. Hey! And uh, let's click on login on a little uh, mobile device here. Right, we're going from Bern to Basel, so... Uh, Lucerne, Zurich, and then Basel. We're going to have to take a break after Zurich for 15 minutes. So Lucerne, Zurich, or Basel. And we're expecting to check in 10 people. So what we want to do first is we want to get these um, luggage doors open. Look at that. Even, like, the raindrops. That's such a nice touch. They've got some, of the, some things really right in this. The raindrops, and that's, like, showing green because it's, like, reflecting the light. It's so cool. Uh, graphically, they've done a good job. Right. You're going to Zurich? We'll take that. Okay, pal, where do you want to go? Uh, Bern to Lutzern. What's his name, anyway? Merlin. Merlin. There he is. Express check-in. You're welcome. Uh, Bern to Zurich. Sounds good. Mia. Yes, we've got you on the list. Ciao. And burn to Basel. Tara. Yep, we've got you. There's bound to be somebody here who gets it wrong. 
Hallo, fahren Sie in meine Richtung? Uh, are you bound for my direction? To Zurich, sounds good. Have you got a ticket, dude? Yes, you have. Cool. Cool! Notice the passengers are like, I don't know how many models there are, but we've got clones already, look. Not a good sign. Servus, das Ticket. Bitte schön. Sehr freundlich. Scan that. Um, yes, I probably do want to see your ticket, love. You know, just being the bus driver, probably do want to see that you've paid for that. <laughs> if that's okay with you. Runa. Auf Gates. See you later, I think. Burn to Zurich. Can't have many less now. Uh, what's your name? Josephine. Yep, yeah, I've got you. And finally, you must be the last one. That we're expecting. So nobody wanted like um oh hang on. I say that. And then we've got unexpected dude here. He wants to go to Zurich. I was about to say nobody actually wanted to buy a ticket, but then I saw this guy. Uh you're welcome, pal. Smugly taps his phone. Okay, let's close that up. Uh let's have a look at our little device here. It's 8.27, we're due to leave at 8.32, so let's get ourselves set up. Looks like the weather's changed quite a bit, uh, so we'll kill those. Should kill some of the lights as well. Don't need so many, so many lights with such lovely weather. Okay, so what we can do now is we can skip time by clicking up here and skip to one minute before, before departure, which is very handy. This is now 8.31, so we've got a bit of a 10. Let's close the doors. Get everything ready over here. So we're going to lock the luggage compartments. We're going to lock the um, the main doors now. Aircon is all set, and we'll play the announcement. Hello and herzlich willkommen bei Flixbus. And that's enough of that because I can't be bothered listening to it. We're good to go. So we're just going to wait for 8:32, and then we'll click on start ride. So a few things we have to remember to do here. There you go. The raindrops still on top. No, oh, they're kind of gone now. That dried off pretty quickly. It's a good looking bus. I'll give it that. It's very detailed. Decent audio as well. Of course, being down at the front here, you pretty much can't hear that engine. Like, the engine's all the way back there. But if you was to, like, walk towards the back, it's how it gets so much noisier. Like, blimey. Okay, so, that's us. Start ride. Let's do this. So, full U-turn. I would love to see coaches coming and going here. I really would love to see that. Preferably other players, but, you know, I'd take AI as well. Just kind of... I don't know, there's just something about... A game that can make you feel like you're part of a transportation network. Say something like Train Sim World, like they got that bit right. Let's press the Q key, that should change the zoom, there we go. So we can see where we're going now. Let's get on that inside lane. Yeah, press the Q key and it changes it. It can be very handy. Oh, I'll tell you what I didn't do. I didn't put the ride height thing up. Um, perhaps we can slow down here and just very quickly find... Comfort Drive, there we go. Just give the passengers a bit of a softer ride. I believe that's how it works. Wow, floating sign. Look at that. How did they miss that one? But your yeah, train sim world has like a timetable and you know, you can jump on any one of the trains on the schedule and the AI will basically drive the rest of them and you can see them all going past at the right time. And that is... That is a cool thing. And if this had that, that would be super, super awesome, wouldn't it? Because you'd be in there and you'd be seeing other passengers and other coaches loading up. And it would just give you that feeling of being inside a kind of living world. Right, we're taking a right here. Oh boy, this thing. I did turn down the tilting on this bus because it that was one of the things that always was a bit weird about Flixbus, certainly in the early days. 
they always insisted that it was realistic, but I, I don't know, when you go around a bend it just used to, to tilt over something insane. But you can dial it back, which is what I've done, but even so, it still was quite a bit. So now we can see some mountains, some grass growing out the concrete. <laughs> a lot of cracked tarmac. Alright, this is going to bring us onto the main highway, I believe. Now, normally... When I take a journey like this, I'd, I'd play the radio or something. It's got a built-in radio. You can tune into um, internet radio, as it were. These kinks in the road, I hate those. I don't see the point of them. They're really annoying. Okay, we've got a top speed of 100. But we don't want to be doing 100. So I'm going to go up to about 85 or so and then hit the cruise control. Let's maybe just go for that. That'll do. Oh no, that's not the cruise control. Cruise control button is there. There it is. Found it. So yeah, we're after a smooth, comfortable ride. We don't want to be doing a ton because what happens is like that little kink in the road. That happens a lot in this map, and I don't get why it does it. It's almost like they got the road in the wrong place and then stitched it together. But you know, high wish just don't do that. You can't be barreling down the road at 100k and then all of a sudden it just kink over. So yeah, some of the things in this game they got right, you know. I think the scenery is quite nice. Certainly the, the dynamic weather is a nice thing to have. The steering feels a bit odd. Let's slow it down a little bit. The frame rates, generally speaking, seem to hold quite well, but... Here's the thing, right? It's 18 months since this game came out, and I... I'm pretty certain that they promised to have um, the ability, like passengers, passengers used to get on and off the bus before they released. And then they like migrated to, I think it was the Unreal Engine. At that point, well, am I in a hurry? No, I just didn't notice the change in speed limit. Oh yeah, by the way, the, all the passengers are basically like the police. Like they're the most observant. They're all sit there with GPS phones and monitor your speed. And then comments on your driving. They're amazing. If I was a driver, I'd just pull over and be like, right, get off. <laughs> get off my bus, you can walk, take your bag. Um, but they promised to have passengers getting on and off the buses um, rather than just teleporting on, and they never did that. I believe they got like one or two new buses, some new paint skins, and a map DLC. I mean, I'm sure there are a few more bits, but... That's pretty much it, really. And unfortunately, that means... I mean, the, there is a hardcore player base for this game, but it's not really taken off. This game has not really gone where it should have gone. Like, since this thing released, we've had a whole bunch of bus simulators come out. None of them, to be fair, have been particularly great. Bus Sim 16, um, although Bus Sim 18 is due out shortly. Or soon, like next month or two. Bus Sim 16 was just a bit meh. A bit too cartoony. Like, th this graphics on this are a lot more authentic. Let's use that word. But on Bus Sim 16, it's all a bit cartoony. A bit more arcade. I don't know about you, but that's not what I'm looking for from a Bus Sim. I'm still waiting for uh, Lotus Simulator. Which, you know, I, I, I don't know when anything is going to come out of that. Lotus Simulator is one of the guys who created OMSI. I don't really know the story of, of the, the guys who created OMSI. There were two guys, they created OMSI, and then a few years ago they, they went their separate ways and there were no more updates to OMSI apart from the odd patch. Uh, one of the guys has, has since... Let me slow down. Gone off to create this Lotus Simulator. Um, they have a Facebook page, but I honestly don't know what their intentions are regarding releases. Wow, this is twisty, eh? Look at this. Blimey. This is where you make your money as a coach driver. Driving in roads like this. Of course, the big advantage you have in real life is when there's vehicles coming the other way, they actually see you coming and 
you can adapt. The problem with the AI is you end up in these sticky situations where it's like a gridlock and they don't move. And then just to make it worse, every time you make a move to fix the problem, they like edge forward on you and make it even worse. But we'll see what we can do. We've been pretty lucky here. But this is one of the nicer things about driving around this DLC Switzerland and Austria is these wonderful switchback mountain roads. I can't remember if we're coming back this way. I don't think we are. Just coming down here will be just as fun as going up. Now there is a parking point up here, but we don't need to make a rest stop yet. Now, rest stops in Fernbus, to me, seem to suffer from the same problem as rest stops in Eurotruck. In that, there aren't many of them, and when you realise you actually need to find one, you actually struggle to find one. Like, the, you know, in Eurotruck, your guy suddenly starts going, Ugh! And then you think, oh my god, where's the next rest area? And you can't find one for miles, and then your guy starts passing out. And then you start getting a fine, and then you find a rest area. You can't just pull over. It's kind of the same in this. Like, it'll let you pull over and take a rest, but... I don't know if it counts. I don't... Wow, okay. What are those wavy lines for? You see the sarcasm that comes out of the mouth? I'm not even sure what he meant by that. I'll tell you what I didn't do. When we picked up the passengers, I didn't lower the bus down. I just I just remembered now, because I thought to myself, when we hit the ground then, did I raise... Did I raise the bus? And we did. Because I never actually lowered it. Crikey, this is going to be a bit longer than I thought it was. This is really twisty coming out of here. So we've got a van behind us as well. Have you noticed the trees in this game? They're kind of like 3D trees, but as you get closer, it's the definition, like the leaf definition gets a lot greater. The old, the old log trick. What was the speed in here? 60. Let's do 15, cruise it. Look at the lights coming on in the distance. <laughs> That's quite funny. If they'd have... It's, it's weird, isn't it? If they'd have opened this game up like Eurotruck... Eurotruck would be in the same boat as this game right now, had it not gone down the route of modding. Because this game has not much content. And Eurotruck, you know, the, the modders provided a lot of content. And this has none. They should have opened it up. Although I've got a sneaky feeling that TML is working on something else now. I'm just not sure what. Uh, is it M for the map key? Hang on a second. Yeah, there we go. Alright, we can see where we are now. So we've just gone through all of this. Um, yeah, we came out of here, went through all this twisty stuff. We're now about to go over this clover leaf. Go on through, and we shall be way on our way to Luzerne. But yeah, as I was saying earlier, when it, what I would normally do on a journey like this is tune into the radio and just listen to some music or some talk show. It's a bit like driving in your car, really. You know, kind of bit of background stuff, but I can't do it, because if I do it, I think I played the radio on one of my streams, and when it went to Squirrel Plus, well, YouTube just went nuts. Like, it just copyright claimed everything. She's just insane, but that's just the way it is. So I can't turn on the radio, unfortunately. Notice the detail along the, the crash barriers, there's like little flowers and stuff. So, I mean, the maps have been done, I don't know who does the maps, I assume it's TML, but the maps have been done pretty, pretty well, I'd say. Oh, here we go, we're getting off here. And then 
Split turn, right turn. Also, if you do, um, I don't know, the weird thing is, like, this th this coach never seems to run out of fuel. Unless you get up to about a thousand Ks, which seems to be about the range of the thing. It must have a huge fuel tank. What it means is, unless you do a seriously long journey, which I must admit, I've never done a seriously long journey in this. But if you do, then you'll need to refuel. But other than that, you pretty much never, ever need to go near the fueling. Which is different to Euro Truck, because in Euro Truck, you you know, you pretty much often will, because it will, in between routes, it will persist your fuel level. Because you've got your truck what you own, and the fuel just keeps going down as you make journeys. Not the case in this. When you create a journey, it spawns you in a brand new bus with a new fuel tank, like a full fuel tank. So you hardly ever need to refuel it. I'm not really sure they should have gone down that route. I think maybe the bus ownership route might have been slightly better. Wow, this is bouncy. I wish you could open the windows like you could and almost say just squeaky open. It's a nice bit of water. Right, let's see if we can get a bit more speed out of this. Otherwise we'll be late. I can see Lucerne is appearing on the map. Ooh, come on. Bring it back. I, I kind of struggle with the steering in, in Fernbus. I don't know what it is. It, it, I can't put my finger on it, but with Eurotruck, when I turn the wheel, it, it translates to a more realistic feeling turning, whereas in the coach in, Fl in Fernbus, it doesn't seem to want to turn. It's almost like having... It's almost like racing a car and having understeer. It feels like understeer. And I keep thinking, is it my gearing? But when I look at the picture of the wheel on the screen, and my wheel, the orientation is the same, so the gearing is correct, like the ratio. But even so... It catches you out when you go around a sharp bend, because you can't turn the wheel quick enough. Okay, we're down to 80. I'm looking for a 60 sign. This may be it. Let's slow it down. Yep, there we go. It's quite picturesque. Oi, pal. Stay in your lane. I have to say, I know that we like to uh, shout at the AI in Eurotruck, but I have to say, Eurotruck's AI is better than this AI. <laughs> it's, the AI in this is very, very annoying. It's aggressive. It doesn't really back off. I'm going to think I may need to be... Oh my god, you see what I mean? I look at that. Not a chance. So this catches me out in Germany a lot. They tend to do this a lot, where they'll they'll have the right lane will be straight on, and the left lane will suddenly turn left, and it keeps catching me out. But this is quite a nice little uh, city. Look at this! Wow. I might have to come here in real life. You can't beat a city with like a lake or a river and mountains. Like it, it's just beautiful. Right. So the orange line is showing you like our current route, and then the yellow line will be our exit route, I believe. And if I've got that wrong, we're in real trouble. Let's just double check the map. Okay, yeah, uh, the orange route's coming in. So yeah, the, uh, the station's all the way down the back there. got a whole bunch of passengers to deal with. Uh, there's the bus station. 
we've got to figure out where our stop point is. So look, there's just no people around. Like, there's nobody walking around. There are no... The only people you will ever see are the ones who are getting on your bus. Wait, this doesn't seem right. I'm seeing buses over here, but then... Our pickup point is around the corner. So, that's a bit confusing. We'll go with it and see what happens. But yeah, where are the people walking around, you know? It's like a ghost town. I don't know if people don't develop games with people walking around because it's frame heavy or they can't be bothered or it's difficult. I don't know. Okay, here we are. Another bus depot. I can't remember what time we were due in. I'm pretty certain we'll be early though. There they are. Now then, do we drive in forward or backwards? I do not know. Let's just do what the rest of them are doing. They're all kind of in backwards, so let's reverse in. Even though, and this is the weird bit, if we reverse into here, we're doing what they're doing, but our bus doors are on the right-hand side, and they're then stood on the wrong side of the bus. So, it's really... Con Whoa, pally peeps! I thought this was a bus depot, not a Lesco, a Lesco truck. Look how aggressive they are, look. As I edge forward, the guy just keeps aggressively pushing me out of the way. Pretty certain they're not supposed to come down here. So now you should, in theory, be able to reverse in by looking at your reversing camera. Let's give it a go. Trying not to kill any passengers. <laughs> oh, that camera is so incredibly useful. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Okay, put it in neutral, put the parking brake on. We shall unlock the doors we shall lower the bus this time so you remembered and um, let's open that oh, it's still a nice day so what time would you 10.35 oh blimey we're due to leave in a minute right leg it open these doors right we've got an express check in today peeps have your tickets ready let's go uh, you're going to Basil 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 what's your name Fiona, something or other. It's good. You can come in. Uh, your name is Hennis. Hennis, Hennis. Yes, you're on the list. God, it's going to be late here. Express check-in looks good. Zurich looks good. Zurich looks good. Uh, no. No, 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 no. Albeck. Oops, indeed, love. Wrong bus stop. Anybody else? No. Why they stood there? Maybe they were the people that got off. Let's quickly close the doors. Uh, let's check on our list here. Checked in to do non. Uh, yes, yeah, so it looks like a few people. Two got off, five got on this one. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. We only just made that. Let's raise the bus. Let's lock, lock, lock. Uh, let's play Hello. the announcement to say hi. <laughs> 10.37, start the ride. That was the quickest turnaround I think I've ever done in Fernbus. Is, the Navi kaput? Is my navigation broken? I'm off the road. No, I think you'll find the game's just being stupid. Honestly, the passengers are like the worst backseat drivers. There's nothing 
come in that way, clear that way. I honestly don't think that truck should have driven through there. I assume that's some kind of map error. So I think we must have lost a lot of speed down the highway because I was only doing like 80 a lot of the time and we can do 100 so obviously the timetable is quite aggressive. Let's try and stick to the timetable better. So we are due uh, 12.29. Got 100 k's to Zurich. Get a bit frame heavy here. Even though it's all just static scenery, like there's nothing moving. That's one of the depots. So if you started a journey here in Zurich, that's where you begin. It's got one of those sliding gates on it. So at the end, we're going to get a big report from the passengers and stuff. We're going to feed their input, like whether we played the announcement how many steering misbehaviors we had which is just such a cracking bit of translation a steering misbehavior you naughty steering <laughs> there's not enough traffic there's not enough AI here this is a city what's going on Milano to Monaco three times daily from 19 euros Milano to Monaco I've actually driven that journey in real life, in a car, in a hire car. I actually drove it from um, from Nice, I think. Was it Nice? Yeah, it was Nice. Come on, let me go. We've got a schedule to keep to here. There's just nothing on the road. Typical traffic lights. Keeps me waiting, and then as somebody else turn, turns up, it keeps them waiting as well. You know what? I've never actually been on a Flix bus in real life. I've heard bad things about the toilets. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to experience it. I've certainly experienced I've certainly experienced the toilets on trains. On what I like to call the burger train. The burger train out of London Liverpool Street. Oh man. So the burger train is essentially more or less any train that leaves after midnight coming out of Liverpool Street or any of the other big stations because in Liverpool Street the services terminate well on a Friday and Saturday they'll terminate at about one o'clock before that I think it's about a half twelve half past twelve something like that um, but the burger train you know I nicknamed it the burger train me and my friend nicknamed it the burger train because it's always got people who get on it. You know, they've all been out on the lash, basically. They've all been out and got drunk. And the, the last thing they do before they jump on the train, because they're drunk, you know? The last thing they do is they go via McDonald's. There's a big McDonald's outside of Liverpool Street Station. So they jump in, they grab a burger, because they're hungry, because they've been out drinking. Then they jump on the train. And, uh, like, if they're alone, generally speaking, what will happen is... They'll sit there eating the burger, which, because they're drunk, half of it will end up down the front. Uh, they'll they'll eat the fries, they'll slurp on the milkshake <laughs> through the straw, make a load of noise, and then inevitably they'll need a trip to the toilet. So off they'll trot, and they'll, they'll pretty much meander their way to the toilet because they're drunk, so they'll be bouncing off the people on the way. And if they're not on their own, if they're with a friend, like... Both of them will be drunk. They'll both eat the meal, but the, in between they'll be talking the most ridiculous conversations, usually very loud. And the worst one is when there's a group of them. When there's a group of them, they're, they're still basically like in a kind of a nightclub mode. They're still shouting and screaming and giggling, doing silly things. And you know what it's like. So yeah, the burger train can be a real fun trip. It's not so bad if you've also had a few beers yourself, or you can just generally ignore it. Um, but if you're sober, like if you, I don't know, if you've been out, if you've been work, like working late, and they'll 
just gone for one or two beers or had a meal or something you're not particularly drunk the burger train is a nasty place but the worst part about the burger train is the toilet the toilet is somewhere you don't want to go unless you absolutely have to because a lot of people have been there and a lot of people have missed and some people have probably thrown up as well nasty place so yeah I don't think the Flixbus toilet can be any worse than that really a lot more people on a train than there are on a Flixbus and a lot more drunk another Cloverleaf Junction Funny, we don't see many cloverleaf junctions in the UK. So cool because it's like a four leaf clover. UK junctions tend to be um, like a giant roundabout either above or below the motorway. One of the two. That will feed off onto the other roads. And if there's like a motorway interchange, then they'll often be just kind of filter lanes that'll take you there but we don't use that design very much I don't, I don't know if there are any clover leaves in the UK I'm sure there are somewhere but I don't know where they are Zurich have you noticed the signs the draw distance on the signs is horrendously bad pay attention to a sign in a minute I'll, I'll try and remember to point it out but you can't read the text until you're about 20 meters away you see this kind of green sign coming at you and it the text is invisible and then it looks like kind of some weird bitmap and then it's about 20 meters away you'll be able to read it it's not good and I don't see why it, with the Unreal Engine I don't see why the draw distance on that should be so bad look at these massive like concrete support walls on either side they just gouged a path through here and then supported it, probably to stop rock falling and stuff. But even so, you can see some massive boulders. Now, I can't hear any passengers complaining, which is basically a good thing. The only time they say anything is to say something negative to you. It would be kind of nice if... I don't know, I mean, even OMSI got this bit right. Passengers get on and say all kinds of crazy things. Like, sometimes they'll say nice things, they'll say please and thank you, and other times they'll just complain, but... All the passengers on this bus, if they open their mouth, it'll be to say that I'm, I'm a bad driver. Now, what I want to do, after we get to Zurich, what I want to do is have a look at where there's a parking spot on the way. What we have to do is pull over into the parking bay. Uh, open the doors. The engine has to be off. And then we uh, click on start, start rest or something. It takes about 15 minute rest. And then you have to get back on the bus and check all the passengers have got back on. The annoying thing about it, though, is every passenger always gets on. Like, without exception. And again, I think it would have been really nice if they'd have tried to catch you out a little bit. So look at that sign now. Watch, watch, watch. Can't read it, can't read it, can't read it. No, you can read it. This is one sharp bend. Do you know what? I could see a lot of accidents happening at a bend like that. kilometers so we're probably on the outskirts of Zurich I had to go to Zurich sometime never been right if we stop here we can't see the red light but we can see the amber and green light and that'll do At least we've got some traffic here, unlike the city. I 
Another thing is about this game, the traffic lights seem to take an almost more realistic amount of time than, say, Eurotruck. Wow. Just aggressively joined. I like how all the cars look like actual real cars, but are just debranded. <laughs> like that Merc there. Here's another one of those annoying kinks in the road. Okay, I think I need to be in that lane. Because it looks like we're branching left. Arrival 1229. But it's only 1145. That's interesting. So right now we're quite early. Get in that lane. Okay, just having a quick look at the overview. So straight over and then turn right into the bus stop and down to 30. Now, I don't know if those roadworks are dynamic or they're always here. I suspect. I suspect they're always here. But there are some dynamic things in Fernbus, I believe. I don't know if that's one of them. Well, I hope... I, I hope our coach fits under here. I'm not exactly sure how high this thing is. Looks like we're not going to be rushed for time this time anyway. And now we're just going to find our turning point. Right, there's the passenger stop down there. Okay, looks like we're going this way. Now, do we drive in forward? Like, how do we do this? Do we drive in? There's no indication. Do we reverse in? Do we drive in forward? I just do not know. So normally I would reverse in just purely based on the fact that the doors are on the same side as the passengers, but on the last one it didn't behave like that at all. Do we drive out that way? Let's reverse in. I honestly don't know. It's not really giving me any clues here. Okay. Neutral. Break. Lower the bus down and unlock all the stuff. Okay, so welcome to Zurich. Right, this journey is a lot longer than I thought it would be, so we're going to have to split this video into two. So this is going to have to be part one now. And uh, we shall carry on from here with part two. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Until part two, take care guys. Happy busing.